Welcome back to the show, everybody. This is the upper tier on YouTube. Head over there, smash that subscribe and bell notification button. Audio versions of the show are available through uh, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Spotify. This is your Beat the Bookie, but a kind of a different Beat the Bookie. It's the FA Cup third round Beat the Bookie this week. Joining me, as always, on the Beat the Bookie show, the Dazzler, Mystic Mac himself. Darren, how are we doing? I'm all right, Noel. How are you? Excellent, excellent. Zoning in, zoning in that, that bringing in that energy to pick these. I'm good trying winners to, I'm week. trying to make sure we're bringing good energy in, Noel, to pick a couple of nice winners so we can bend Paddy Power over and slap the arse on him and empty the little fat fuckers pockets. Now, excellent. Paddy, take that, you little chunk. <laughs> <laughs> excellent. Well, for those who aren't familiar with Beat the Boogie, Beat the Boogie is the show we bring you every week where we try to make you a few quid and we also place a few charity bets trying to win, trying to share the wealth and look after a few charities on our way. We haven't had much luck yet, but we've been pretty close a number of times. We haven't, been, we haven't uh, had any luck with the, the charity bets we've done. But some of the bets that we've had on the shows have come up. It just so happened they weren't the bets we put the money down on. Um, but we're getting closer. I feel like, you know, our, um, our look is going to change. In, our look has changed in the 2022. You know, like I feel it. I've already had two of those nice wins, you know, about this year. And I'm just thinking to myself, you know what? I didn't have two wins last year. I've had two wins in the first week of this year. This is a win. Let's keep this rolling. We're on this trajectory. The positivity, the power of positivity. Absolutely. Yeah. Let me go down first of all. We go down through the fixtures for our viewers first. So obviously it's a uh, Wolves versus Sheffield United. West this is a Ham. serious. This is a serious list of fixtures, by the way. Well, we're only we're only focusing mainly on the Premier League on on okay, this list okay. of fixtures. West Ham versus Leeds. West Brom versus Brighton. Tottenham versus Morecambe. Swindon Town versus Man City is the Friday game kicking off tomorrow evening. Eight o'clock. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Assuming it goes ahead with news coming out today about some. Um, Variant testing and stuff like that. Pep and the boys. I'm sure City could put the four team out against Swindon and get a result, couldn't they? Yeah, I would imagine so. Uh, so I, I you think I think Pep would prefer to get this game out of the way rather than have it clog up his fixture list in a couple of weeks, if I'm honest. Yeah, absolutely. Um Swansea versus Southampton, Port Vale versus Brentford, Nottingham Forest versus Arsenal, Newcastle versus Cambridge, United versus Villa, which is the Monday night one's going to be a cracker. Um, Liverpool versus Shrewsbury again not sure whether that game will be on or not based on the latest information the Arsenal game is called off so you would assume the Shrewsbury game will be called off as well Leicester versus Watford Chelsea versus Chesterfield Charlton versus Norwich and Burnley versus Huddersfield so there are your fixtures in terms of your Premier League interest in the FA Cup third round give us a pick there let's start so I have my, um, I've got two for us this week for the FA Cup. We've got a banker and a buster. So our banker comes in at a, at a tasty 11 to 1. Um, I don't see a whole lot of issues in this one, if I'm honest. But you just never know. FA Cup weekend, a lot of managers are going to make changes. They're going to give guys games that need minutes under their belt. So there will be changes. But you would have to think with the, with the five teams I'm going to go for here. 11 to 1, you're picking up money. Everton. I'm going to have Everton first, um, Birmingham, Barnsley, Blackpool, and Borough, Middles Borough, uh, with three Bs in there. Uh, so Everton, Birmingham, Barnsley, Blackpool, and Middlesbrough. And that is 11 to 1. Um, that is my banker for the weekend. You love flying that championship flag, don't you? I really do. <laughs> Um, I absolutely do. I'm a big follower of the championship. I think it's, I think the championship is severely underrated. Not necessarily the quality in it, but the league itself and how difficult the league it is. And, you know, if you look at the way the Premier League clubs use the championship to, to feed players out, it is a weed now process, isn't it? Um, yeah. it, it if they can't make it in, in the championship, or if they maybe need to be a little bit kind of battle-hardened, they'll send guys out. I know it's something United have done this year with Tiha Chong. Um, United were kind of on the fence about Chong. Yeah, he had a period in Germany last year where things maybe didn't go his way. Um, and I know he came back this year and they sent him out on loan. He's at Birmingham. I think first five games of the season, he had three man-of-the-match performances. Now he's been carrying an injury for a little while now. 
But it was a great idea to send him out there and try and get minutes under his belt, toughen him up a little bit. That when he comes back into the Premier League, he realizes, you know what, I can, I can, I can do this. Like there's a confidence builder from there and stuff like that, you know. And if you use it properly, it can really work in your favor. Yeah. Um, but I think the championship is very, very underrated. Um, you know, I think there's a case for and and. And here's a here's a headline for our TikTok fans. I think there's a case for the championship being the second best league in Europe. There's a call, isn't it? There's a call. Absolutely. Two games a week for a full season. You mm. know, it's thick and fast. It's hell for leather. What? It's shitty pitches. It's mm. bad dressing rooms. You know, it's very tough, tough. to get a bet up. <laughs> it is. It is yeah. tough. I mean, you're looking. You look the lead leaders and they go and play the team in 12th and they get rolled over 4-0 and you go, mm. what happened there? You know, it's just on their day, I think when things click for almost any team in that championship, they can go and smash somebody. Now, listen, we know it doesn't happen week to week, but but it's there. You know, the possibility is, of it is there. Do you know what might be really cool? It might be really cool if there was like a, a kind of a, a pan-European tournament for, say, the second tier down, that championship and whatever the equivalent is in the, in the top countries around Europe. And what happens is the three teams that make it to the playoff and don't go through, one gets promoted, obviously, through the playoff system. The other yeah. two obviously get promoted first and second. So the yeah. three teams that don't make it through the playoff, imagine they come, say, first, second, and third, apart from the teams that get promoted. Yeah. And those three teams go into like a Europa Conference type style kind of thing and they play the equivalent around Europe if they have an equivalent around Europe. That'd yeah. be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Absolutely. I think your only issue, well, there's, there's two major issues with it. Number one, I don't know if there's space in the calendar for a championship team to play maybe three to six group games because they are absolutely snowballed. Maybe do it games. as a straight knockout. Possibly. Like the old European um, Cup way. Yeah, say. possibly. And the other thing I would say is I'm not sure that all leagues in Europe um, have a an equivalent a, an equivalent of a, a playoff mm. you know what I mean so you might get three from England but from Jeremy then you just taking spots or well, from if, Austria well, then well, if they don't it? have but a playoff I, let's suppose they have three that get promoted so so just go the next three down the, yeah listen I'd love to see mm. I'd love to see I think you know when you talk about European football that Europa conference that come in, come in that has come in now it does give certain teams you know an opportunity mm. to maybe get to the European stage where they wouldn't ordinarily get to. But I don't know whether some of the teams, certainly in the bigger leagues, are looking at this going, we don't want this. Mm. This is kind of this is kind of spare meat in our plate, really. You know, it's not a necessity for us. We're playing if you're if you're, you know, um West Ham. West Ham were in the conference this year, weren't they? Uh, I think they were. No, West no West Ham are in the Europa proper. And West Spurs, Ham, so Spurs, Spurs are the only one in the conference. So Spurs, like, I mean, do Spurs really want to be going away to Moldova on a Thursday night when they have a Premier League game on a Sunday? And do you know what I mean? Like, I don't yeah. think it. No, I don't I, think it's prudent I think, for. But, but I think for championship fans, I think if you absolutely. had say like, um, like say like a Middlesbrough versus Cologne, or you had you know, and just do it up as a straight knockout draw, an old school way of doing absolutely. That. The European Cup type thing, you know, but just just call it something else and try and get a decent sponsor on board and maybe a bit of TV broadcasting and all that kind of stuff. And it's another it's another uh, bit of revenue coming in for the clubs. And know? I think it's a little bit of excitement for those fans who are maybe in the dredges of a championship campaign yeah. that might not be going as well as they because yeah. you know quite regularly teams that don't get up in those sort of four, fifth, and six spots in the playoffs struggle the next season because mm. they might have to ship players out and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and it could be a nice little break away from it and stuff like yeah. that, you know. And I, I just think when you, you you've played so hard through the championship, it's such a tough season, and you get to the playoffs, it's heartbreaking. Oh, and really? Unless, is. You, unless you win the playoffs, there's nothing for anyone else. And, and I just think it'd be a nice little nudge for them, you know. Yeah, financially, you know, it it could uh, it could really unlock something for those teams. Um, yeah. We know ourselves, like an extra five million for a team that came fourth or fifth in the championship is big, big money. Mm. You know, in the Premier League, you know, they won't blink for five million. But in the championship, that could be massive. that could be massive. Yeah. That could be yeah. two, three, four players. Um, worth of wages for the year. Yeah, and we know we know the playoff game is potentially a fifty million pound game. 
and, and upwards. I think now they're estimating a closer to eighty million. Yeah, you know, so it's big, mm. it's huge books. So I, th- I think um, it'd be nice for the other three who don't make it to be able to turn yeah. around and go. You know, well, we have a draw, oh. and may- maybe they started earlier. You know, the way they start some of the European stuff earlier. Yeah. Started maybe end of July or something like that, or early August when they do those preliminary rounds and let it kick off. Because I know the championship comes back. What it's a week earlier, is it or two weeks earlier? Yeah, comes a week earlier. Yeah, championship. Championship, and, and then Shield, on the Sunday you have the charity shield, and then the Shield, following week and then the the following weekend. Yeah, it'd yeah, so be, be a cool little sort of European idea to get that second tier, if you like, involved maybe, and and it might be nice for the fans as well. You know, you could imagine like because some of those fans. That get into that kind of playoff situation, you know, the derbies of this world and stuff like that. They have a decent following and stuff like that. They're a decent club. Absolutely. And it'd be but cool to see Derby versus Cologne or Derby versus there's, whoever, there's you know. Big teams all around Europe with, with lots of history that have maybe, you know, through the lack of financial investment, have dropped down the football tier in their particular or, or country. Or poor management, which wasn't or poor management, management either, you know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. and yeah, all of a sudden you could have, you know. Yeah, you could have big football. You could have a Nottingham Forest who are, you know, European pedigree, yeah. and they're going and playing some of the other big Antwerp teams. Or something you know, like stuff that, you absolutely. know, or a decent Dutch team or something like that. Yeah, that'd Utrecht be excellent. or something like that. That'd be kind of cool. Like you know, just yeah, you absolutely. Go. If they do announce my idea, I'm taking it. I'm taking it. It's you get a idea. percentage. I want a percentage. <laughs> I want a percentage. Hopefully, we have a percentage of that fourth bet. It's eleven to one on that one. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Nice bet there. Um, I did a handicap bet to start out with first. Um, so I went for the I went for the big guns. So I went for Man City, Newcastle, Chelsea, and Tottenham, all minus three. Big score. all minus three. All minus three. You've got Man City's in there against Swindon. You've got Newcastle are facing Cambridge. I'm hoping for that Kieran on trippy a bump. Um, Kieran, he won't. He won't be. Um, he won't be registered. No, but I mean, it could, be, it could be uplifting to see what the club is doing. Um, then Newcastle went, minus three, sweet Jesus, man. You've sorry, helped, actually, you? I'm wrong. I did Newcastle minus two. I did Newcastle minus two and the rest minus three. And then I did Chelsea versus Chesterfield. Chelsea's looking like they're getting back to a bit of form based on last night against Spurs. And then I did Spurs, who were obviously going to have to come out and, and make amends for that disaster last night that they did. Um, 44 to one. Certainly value in it, isn't there? There is. Um, uh, I think that Newcastle one's going to be tough to get. I think really? Cambridge will do all right. Yeah, we'll probably see a 39 year old Wes Hillen playing, uh, trying to cause a bit of trouble for uh, Newcastle. I have I might, a very, I, very I, good I might go back in and go minus three. So <laughs> <laughs> I have a very, very good friend of mine uh, who was over with Cambridge in the academy over there. Um, and he keeps abreast with them, so I know uh, he's a United fan like myself. So I know he's uh, he's going to be keeping a close eye on that one this weekend, you know. Yeah, but that uh, that that was my handicap bet to start out with. Um, I'll give you I'll give you another one. I did uh, the over two point five goals. Um, this is I, a, this is a nice one we like, isn't it? Yeah, this is this is a favorite. This is beginning to be this is beginning to be a favorite. The show that's yeah. all. That's well, I say, I, 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 I typically go with a handicap bet. Then I go over two point five. Then I go both teams to score and both teams to score and result. That tends to be my pattern of betting, similar to yourself. So for the over two point five, um, again I did Man City versus Swindon. I did Newcastle versus Cambridge. Right. Chelsea versus Chesterfield. Okay. I have Liverpool in there versus Shrewsbury, but again, I'm not sure whether it's going to happen or not. Uh, mm-hmm. t- Tottenham versus Morgan and right. Arsenal Arsenal versus Notts Forest. Eight. So that's six games over 2.5 goals. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, six over 2.5. Eight to one. Yeah, that's that's you're picking up money there if you're asking me, I have to say. Yeah. I think that's a great bet. Hmm. I think at eight to one, that could be worth a couple of our euros this weekend. Um, because again, I think you're right. I think there's going to be a few goals in those games, isn't there? You've, you've gone with a lot of the bigger sides, so even if they concede, you know they'll they'll score one or two and get back into it. And over two point five really only means three in the game. I think yeah. in three in the game, you're looking you're looking uh, comfortable enough at most of them, aren't you? Yeah, sometimes when I look at the FA Cup, I nearly think some of these bets are nearly up by half time. You know that kind because you might get a team that you know for the first twenty minutes, the likes of Cambridge, as you spoke about, may come out of the blocks and give yeah. Newcastle a bit of a game and maybe nick a goal. Who knows? But you always know that eventually, 
you know, the Premier League team generally will run them down a little will bit. Will wear and, them down. And yeah, they run absolutely. out of steam and eventually pick up a couple of goals. So it's normally not a bad bet at all. Um, I've got a I've got a booster one as well, which I picked for our charity bet, but I won't give it to you yet because I I've one more to give you there. Uh, oh, the both, both teams to score one, okay? So mm-hmm. I had uh, Bristol and Fulham, Burnley and Huddersfield, Coventry and Derby, West Brom and Brighton, Forest and Arsenal, and Villa and United, thirty to one. Yeah. Great price tidy again. Great price. price. Yeah, price. really, really tidy. Yeah, uh, I'm just digesting the names as you were sending them through to me. So there's, there's ten teams all together, yeah. Yeah, the ones I probably want to run by are the ones you're more familiar with the championship, but Bristol and Fulham, both teams to score. Yeah, I mean Bristol had a great win last weekend, three two. Andy Voiman got a hat trick. Um, he's ex Aston Villa, Andreas Voiman, uh, Austrian international, good footballer, and has scored his goals in kind of in gluts for for Bristol this year season. He, he's got. Um, He's got two on five occasions. Then at the weekend, he got a hat trick, you know, a late winner in the 94th minute, I think. So, yeah, I think that looks like a good bet with Fulham. Fulham are, are reasonably tight at the back, but I think with the team they'll send out, knowing that they don't have a championship game, they'll give guys a game. And I think you can definitely see goals there. Yeah. Mm. Um, Coventry Derby. Yeah, Coventry Derby. Coventry at home have been excellent this season. Derby are on a phenomenal run of form. Um, Derby are twenty one. They're twenty one points. They got a twenty one point deduction Derby this year, and um, so they're rooted to the bottom of the championship. But I've got to say, the job Wayne Rooney is doing with them is phenomenal, mm. really phenomenal. They're within touching distance of getting out of that um, that relegation zone. Now, I would say with a twenty one point deduction, if Wayne Rooney stops Derby getting relegated, that's up there with the great managerial performances. In, of the in championship history yeah, and absolutely. certainly of the season. I mean, you know, he when they come back for preseason training, if I'm right, you had 11 senior footballers at the club. Um, so there was a lot of stuff to do there. Do you reckon if they bumped them to 21 points, they'd be in the playoff positions? They wouldn't be in playoff positions, but they wouldn't be a, mo- a million miles away. Wouldn't be a million miles away. Yeah, absolutely. And by the end of the season, you know, he's... He brought in a lot of kind of older players. He's got Curtis Davis playing there, Phil Jagielka, Colin Cazin Richards, all guys we've heard of before in the Premier League, stuff like that. Mm. Um, the boy uh, Tom Lawrence. He's got the lad Jason Knight from from that Ireland fans will will uh, will know about. He's got some good footballers Tom there. La- and he, Tom Lawrence is that the ex Hull guy? Tom Lawrence is ex Man United. He's the guy that crashed the car with all the boys in it. Remember? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Richard Keogh and stuff like that, and. So yeah, he just some he's actually now club captain. So there's okay. they're doing really, really well. Um they're scoring, you know, they are scoring and Coventry at home pick up a lot of goals. Again, I think you should have that no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Um right, go on, give us your give us your buster. Right, my buster. Now we're rolling the dice a little bit here, but I've only gone for three teams because even with these three teams, if they come in, we could make it a buster. Um, I can make a case for all of them. I think the first one is going to be Charlton. Charlton are at home at the Valley. They're playing Norwich. Norwich are probably going to send out the second team or the you know the guys that aren't getting games week to week. They're gonna have no that, choice, you know. So because five five of their boys have gone off to the Afcon, haven't they? Norwich. I'm not sure yeah. if it was five gone with Norwich. Wasn't, wasn't there five? Because this who was there? Um is it five? I think that might be Wofford. Oh sorry, there's there's three, I think, is it? Or Norwich or something like that, I think. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I do know they're probably down to some bare enough bones. Yeah. And now going to the valley won't be easy. Um, tough place to go. Tough place to go. Uh Charlton have been in decent form this season. Um and I'm gonna say Charlton is my first one on my buster. Um, you mentioned them previously in our last bet. I think Huddersfield away at Burnley. We know how poor form Burnley have been in. They got turned over last weekend at Leeds. Again, they'll make changes this weekend. You know, we're not going to see Maxwell Cornet. He's gone away to the African Cup of Nations. Um, you know, they're without Nick Pope. Uh, he's got Hennessy in goal. He'll make change in the back four in the midfield. They could be a little bit better. Huddersfield are in good, good form in the championship. They really, really are. And um, Sorba Thomas. Uh, Josh Caroma, Jordan Rhodes, 
Um, they have a lot of good, good footballers there. Or Huddersfield, they're they're taken along tidily in the in the championships. They probably should secure if they keep the ball rolling the way they are. They probably should secure a playoff spot towards the end. I would think. Um, listen, in the championship, you just don't know what will happen, but keep an eye on them. So I'm going to go Huddersfield and Charlton. It's a good show. Now, you know where I'm going next, Noel. This is going to hurt. You're going Villa, are you? I'm going Villa. <laughs> I could feel it in the facial. The facial was coming through the screen at me. This is going to hurt. Um, I think Stevie's going to be back this week for Villa. They'll be buoyed by their manager returning. They've been in really good form. Um, they lose a couple to the AFCON. They don't lose a shed load, you know, two or three maybe. But I think around that squad at Villa, there's a lot of there's a lot of youth and there's a lot of exuberance that needs game times. Um, we look at the boy, uh, Chukwamika, the two Ramsey brothers. Um, you know, you're probably talking about if he's fit, um, Bailey getting a game. You know, when Dia, there's a lot of these guys who are just on the cusp or who haven't managed to get a run of games under their belt that I'm sure Stevie's going to go, you know what? Let's put these boys in here because he's going to Old Trafford. He's got history at Old Trafford. You know, he's got camera kissing history at Old Trafford. Mm. He won't want to go out there and be absolutely annihilated. He'll over, put it, yeah. yeah, he'll put a better team out than United will. I think United will make a lot of changes. Um, I think he'll try and give a lot of players game time. You know, and I think I think we'll certainly see Dean Henderson play. Um, if not Tom Heaton, one or the other. Tom Heaton be possibly playing against his old team Villa if he gets a game. Um, I think we'll probably see, you know, Dallo, um, Phil Jones, maybe um, maybe Tellez, maybe Fred, Donny van der Beek, uh, Elanga, you know, Cavani. I think there could be lots of changes in this United team. Mm. That really, really could. Maybe even a couple of extra youth players. So with that in mind, I think this is a massive opportunity for Villa to go and nick a victory at Old Trafford in the FA Cup. It happened a couple of years ago, third round, FA Cup, Leeds came to Old Trafford, Jermaine Beckford 1-0, put us out on a cold January uh, afternoon. I think we could see something similar. That'd be mad, wouldn't it? United out of both domestic cups. Yeah. Um, listen, we obviously spoke at length last night about it. Mm. I don't think the cup competitions mean anything to United at the minute. Um, I think before you can start putting your eyes on the on the EFL or on the on the FA Cup, you've got to have your house in order in the Premier League and the Champions League, and we don't. We've got to get our house in order for the Premier League, and we've got to get some sort of confidence and some sort of tactics set and, and get the ball rolling so that when we come to March and we do have Atletico Madrid in that Champions League, that we're going out with a base to go. You know, we're seven games away from winning the European Cup. Mm. That that can't be that can't be overlooked. Now listen. I'm not for one minute suggestion suggesting we're going to win the the Champions League or the European Cup, but with the opportunity to go a little bit further in that, you know, you, you would have to prioritise that over the FA Cup. And obviously, we're out of the EFL already. Mm. So for me, this would be about trying to trying to get minutes under the belt for the following week's game at Villa because we're at Villa again then in the That's league. In the league, yeah. And we need to make sure that, you know, for me, I would be more than happy to get knocked out of the FA Cup, but pick up three points at Villa Park. That, for me, would be a win. Keep I have you, to be honest. Keep you in your top four race. And that's what we need right now. This FA Cup is yeah. a distraction for United, so I think we might take our eye off the ball a little bit. So my buster is Huddersfield, Charlton and Aston Villa. And that treble, if it comes in, will pay 110 to 1. It's a lovely price. Lovely price. It is picking. not out of the equation picking, at all. You're picking up a G off that for a tenner. Do you know what I mean? Now, listen, here's the thing. We could come on here on Monday night and we could get all those wrong. But yeah. we're looking at it based on, you know, the information we've got now and current form, performances and stuff mm. like that. What's going away in the AFCON, Corona, all of this. If I had a tenner spare, which I probably will, I might throw it on Villa, Charlton and Huddersfield and see if I could pick myself up a nice four-figure sum. Yeah, it's a great bet, great show. Super show. Um, my one will be kind of contrary to that, I would say. 
Okay. Um, but this is what I picked out this week for the charity bet. Um, this week we're um, we're looking at going to Bernardo's if it comes in. This is our selection this week. Um, so both teams to score and result. Obviously, that's where we always get the good pricing and stuff like that. Absolutely. So I went against you there because I went for Burnley. Um, okay. Against Huddersfield. Um, and yeah, it's does it is a possibility, all right. Yeah. Absolutely. I also went for Leicester because of Wofford, the, the trouble that they're having with the players and the AFCON and all this kind of thing. We know they're going to be decimated. So I went for Leicester. Um, Southampton. I went for the governor away, away at Swansea. Away at Swansea. Yeah, I looked at them. I think it's going to be a tough one to, to call, actually. Yeah. Um, Southampton showing a bit of form at the moment. They are, absolutely. And, and you know, we are fans of, of the governor, Ralph, at Southampton. Yeah. Um, Swansea won't be an overly easy place to go, I'd imagine. But again, with a few changes, they're kind of languishing in mid-table in the championship. They're, they're looking for a run, of, a, run of, a run of wins, maybe, to pop them back into the playoff. Reckoning, but uh, at the minute it doesn't seem to be happening. Then I went for West Ham as well. West Ham versus Leeds, similar to your own thinking. I was thinking with Leeds, their priority might be the Premier League. Absolutely, so they, they might change it up. But I think yeah. with Moyes, Moyes is in a pretty decent position in the league, and I think he yeah. might put out a strong enough side because he might want to have a go of a bit of silverware. Well, so, I think if you look at the sides he was putting out in the in the Europa, which was a secondary competition for West Ham. He was still had enough out there to get results week to week. Yeah. You know, if he didn't play Lanzini in the league game, mm. he played him in Europe. And if he didn't play yeah. Fornals, and then he played Maswaka, mm. and then so yeah, I think West Ham are a great show against Villa. And I think Le- Leeds, I think Leeds at the moment, I think. Oh, sorry, against Leeds. Yeah, I think Leeds at the moment, if they start shopping and changing, it's um, it dilutes them down big time in terms of the quality that they have there. Hundred um, percent. We know how small that squad is, don't we? Yeah, I also put Wolves in there against Sheffield United. Both teams to score and Wolves to win. Wolves are at home. Again, in really good form. They'd be buoyant by the result against United and stuff like that. Again, yeah. Brown Olaga, I think he'll be a guy who'll want to have a bit of a run at Silverware as well. And I know that he's coming up through the league as well. So he, he's reasonably comfortable in where he is at the moment. And before he, start, he might as well roll the dice now before he starts losing players. Yeah. There's a mass exodus on the way here at Wolves, isn't there? Yeah, I've seen, uh, seen United linked with Neves there this morning and all. So. And they're not talking about the summer either. They're, they're talking about now. Yeah. They're I, talking I, about, you know, throwing I, decent money that direction, I think. I have a funny feeling with the way things are shaping up at the moment that the, the January transfer window is going to feel like a summer transfer window. There's going to be a lot of business, I think, is going to be conducted. It's already with, kicking in as it is. With the likes of Newcastle putting money out there, mm. it starts the merry-go-round. Yeah. And a lot of the time you're waiting for money to, to drip into the, the, the transfer window for it to start moving around. But I think, you know, looking at it, you know, they've obviously, Kieran Trippier is almost done. They're looking at Luca Dinia and, and possibly sending Sean Longstaff in the other direction. Um, Everton are massively interested in Longstaff. Uh, Rafa Benitez worked underneath, or worked with Longstaff at Newcastle. Knows about the qualities of the young lad and um, bring a bit more energy to that that Everton midfield, you know, with the likes of Alan and the Corey and stuff like that. Mm. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's big moves to be made in January, I think, with, with, with some of the teams, the way they're struggling and, and need rein, uh, reinforcement, you know. I know Spurs want reinforcements. I don't know whether Spurs are going to be the kind of team that go out in January and do this. You might see one or two with Spurs, but I think that the Spurs deal will be short term. But I, I definitely think you're right. I think we could, we could be in for a big window. Yeah. Well, the, uh, well, our viewers will be able to follow that because we'll be bringing you our transfer show on a weekly basis where we'll be looking at all that stuff. The last one we put in was Arsenal. Arsenal against Forest. We know how good Arsenal are in the FA Cup and we know they value yeah. it greatly and stuff like that. Um, but they are also, they're in that top four mix as well. So I'm not sure. Also, they have boys away at the AFCON. Obviously, Partey is gone, El Elneny and Aubameyang. So part A will be a miss, but El Nenny wasn't really getting in that much. He was kind of a bit part player, and Obama Yang was, in, you know, he was out in the cold. Really, they're looking to ship him on at the moment. So I don't think they'll be greatly affected, and um, depending on what comes out of testing on. The no, it's just like it's just an, an extra couple of numbers that you can't call upon. Yeah. You know, you so it will it will thin them out slightly, but um, no, I think you're right. I think they should have enough to get over Forrest. And I think Forrest will probably make it a reasonably interesting game and they'll get involved, you know? Yep. So what would you say the odds on this are? Um, was there six there? 
There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So six, six. Uh, so that's twelve teams to score plus six wins. Um. I'm going to say that's about 400 to 1. 2,010 to 1. Yeah. I missed me six leg. That's where, yeah. Yeah. So a fiver, a fiver on that will return 10 Gs. 10 Gs. So that's going to Bernardo's if we can get it up. Is that if it? If we can get that up, that bet will be going on tomorrow morning. And if it comes in, there'll be 10 Gs going off to Bernardo's. Imagine, imagine getting to go to Bernardo's. And get one of them giant novelty checks. Yeah, be cool, wouldn't it? And being like from the upper tier yeah. to Barnardo's, Barnardo's, ten grand. Yeah, there you are. That'd be a lovely, yeah. lovely start to twenty twenty two, wouldn't it? And, and I'm sure that that gives a lot of luck going out the, going through the year as well, wouldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, some great bets there, some great picks. As always, we would encourage our viewers. Hit a like and subscribe on the channel and on the episode. Obviously, go down into the comments there. Drop your picks for the FA Cup tour ground. Let us know who you're throwing your money on. We are quickly approaching the weekend. It does kick off tomorrow evening, Friday. So mm-hmm. make sure you're out of work early. few points. Get the coupons out. And let's see. But as always, we always say, always gamble responsibly. Not with money that you cannot afford. This yeah. is not a means of an income. This is a bit of fun. Make sure you give the wife her wages first before you go near the bookies. Because mm. if you don't, she's going to slap you up and you deserve it. Yeah. The secret don't is come go to home Darren. first, then go to the bookies. Not go don't to come the bookies to Darren and Don't come to Darren and Noel and be like, hey lads, lost me arsehole. What's the story? Because we won't be helping you. Right? Yeah. That, oh, that, trap six, that trap six banker at Swindon in the 545 is not the one yeah. to be putting your wages on. Absolutely. So make sure you go home and you pay the piper first before you start go, before you go out and have any a little fun now on Saturday afternoon. And, and then when and your wife, your wife of takes your wages off you and then hands you back your allowance for the weekend. Yes, exactly. That's when you can have the fun. You can have the fun out of the allowance. Absolutely. That's it. You just have no lunch for work on Tuesday, <laughs> but you'll be grand after that. <laughs> Salad is the way to go all week. <laughs> yeah, it's January. It's January anyway. Everyone's trying to lose a stone either way. Absolutely. <laughs> or four. <laughs> Dry January. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, as always, a pleasure having you on. This has been Beat the Bookie FA Cup Tour Ground Picks. We will talk to you again real soon. Cheers, pal. Thanks, brother.